This podcast is sponsored by A. Miller George Funeral Home, where each life is celebrated, and their sister company, Cremation London and Middlesex, both family owned and operated. By Hyde Park Care Pharmacy. Experience the difference an independent pharmacy can make for you and your loved ones. Hyde Park Care Pharmacy offers personalized care, short wait time, very competitive pricing, easy transfer of your prescription, and much more. And by Molly Maid. During these times of COVID-19, it has never been more important to keep your family safe. With the healthy home cleaning system, Molly Maid London is here to help. Make your home a healthy haven. Call Molly Maid London today. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and wherever you may be tuned in. We welcome you back to another edition of the Vickers Crossing podcast. Now with swag. Swag. The Vickers Crossing. Yeah, the Vickers Crossing is a virtual space where faith intersects with the public square. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Rob Henderson, and I'm the priest at Holy Trinity St. Stephen's Anglican Church here in London. Great spot. Incredible spot. Uh, Kevin George, sorry, I got so wrapped up in that I forgot who I was. <laughs> Ke- Kevin George from St. Aidan's Anglican Church in uh, in uh, northwest of London and uh, Vicar 2 of the Vicar's Cross. Oh, Ian's on mute. Here, let's try this again. My name is Ian, and I'm the I believe I was called delinquent producer of yes, this sorry. podcast. He is the delinquent producer. <laughs> a lot of things are going wrong today. If, if, <laughs> if, if you've been listening on any of the listening platforms to Drew Hart and wondering why we wouldn't put a YouTube video of him up, it's, <laughs> it's not entirely my fault. It's, it's the delinquent producer. It's entirely my fault, and I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> coming soon, coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. <laughs> all right, all right. Good. Well, we're glad we're all back together again. We've been really looking forward to uh, gathering today as we record this. This is actually an amazing yeah, uh, big day. moment right now as we record this on the 7th of November on a Saturday. We just heard uh, an hour ago yep. that Joe Biden was, uh, was uh, called as the new president of the United States, won yep. the election, because we've been waiting all week for that. And today, in the midst of that, we're bringing in a wonderful guest that I'm sure we'll have a little bit to say about that. Uh, Nadia Boltz Weber is here on the Vickers Crossing. We've been so looking Very forward to, to meeting her and bringing her in to have a chat. Wonderful uh, author and speaker and preacher and Lutheran pastor and theologian yeah. and just yeah. can't wait. So we're really yeah, excited maybe. about that. I hear that Ian's mom is like, like Ian's mom really likes Nadia, yeah? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's so, well, yeah fangirling out that we're interviewing her so really? that's what i heard yeah. we'll get well, maybe that. maybe we can surprise mom <laughs> well, or something who, knows? Uh, who knows let's see what happens maybe. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> all right uh thanks again to our sponsors and hello to all of our sponsors who help us out so much here at the vickers crossing to a miller george funeral home where each life is celebrated and their sister company cremation london and middlesex both family owned and operated hello dave um and uh what who have i got oh i don't know who i've got oh, i've got uh got. Hyde Park Care Pharmacy, Carol Basada, great spot, locally owned, locally operated, locally loved. I have this um, uh, diabetic uh, monitor thing I used to tap my arm and all that, right. and it, qu- it quit on me yesterday. It mm-hmm. just quit. So I went into the Hyde Park Care Pharmacy, and I said, and it was late Friday, right? So, I mean, you're not yeah. getting into the doctor to get, because they have to prescribe to get the thing covered under insurance, all that. So I went in, I said, look, here's the thing. My, my thing quit. That's okay. Here's a new one. We'll get a hold of the doctor on Monday and get it submitted. But don't worry about it. Just take it now and go. Um, That's the kind of care you get at Hyde Park yeah. Care Pharmacy. So check it out. Awesome. And last, but certainly not least, we have Molly Maid. Make your home a healthy haven. Call Molly Maid London today. And we want to say thank you to Trisha Lister for that one. Amen, Trisha. Amen. All right, great. Well, thank you to all our sponsors. And uh, before we bring Nadia into the Zoom room to chat today on the Vickers Crossing, we're going to take care of our usual weekly silliness. Are you ready, guys? Oh, I'm so ready for silliness. So ready. It's it's time for a little sickness. (laughs) (laughs) Or suds. Ah. So we, we changed the format a bit, as you know, the last couple of shows. Um, so today I'm going to, again, give you the name of a sickness today. Mm-hmm. 
mm -hmm. something. And you guys, I'll give you multiple choice. You guys got to guess what it is. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. So I think this one's too easy though. I, I because I feel bad for you. I've stumped you. I think two times in a row. Mm, yeah. I see. And I didn't want to. I didn't want to put too much pity pressure on, on you guys. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So today, um, there's we did phobias before. So I got one more phobia. I had a couple. Hey, I got I got the phobia right, didn't I? The one about the phone, right? Didn't I get that one right? Yeah, did you, you get did. that one right? I got oh, okay. that one. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought yeah. I stumped We're you not on that all one. that bad. Yeah, remember because it was, uh, it was, uh, what was it? No mo, no mo phone. No mo phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, was it. that was it. All right, this yeah. is going to be an easy one today, okay? But it go. does have something to do with kind of the times that we're in. So the phobia today is cryophobia. Cryophobia. Cry or cryophobia, I should say. Cryophobia. Cryophobia. So cry cryophobia. cryophobia the fear of mourning or loss, not AM mourning, but mourning is in, in like grief. Really bad, yeah. right? Grief, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it that? Is it the fear of losing? Mm -hmm. or, or is it the fear of winter? Winter. Cryophobia. Mourning, losing, or winter. What is that the fear of? Mm. And Ian, Ian's got a look of like he's pretty confident here. So I'm yeah, gonna I'm, I, I'm pretty confident. Um, I'm going to say it's losing because, uh, <laughs> you know, some, some big orange guy, um, uh, might have this, this, He's got uh, cryophobia today. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. He might. He's it's golfing. It's, it's acting up in the golf course. As <laughs> <Yeah. we speak. laughs> it's causing him to have the shanks. Okay. So Ian says it's the fear of losing, fear of losing. losing things. Yeah. I don't think, I, I think it's like the same origin as the word crypt, uh, which Ooh. is a place where you bury people. So I, I feel like it's a, a, a fear of mourning of, okay. of grieving and that kind of loss. Okay. Uh, good. Good guys. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I couldn't, I didn't think I could throw a, a better softball, but I got you both again. Oh, come on. What? Yeah. <laughs> Cryophobia is the fear of winter and cold things. As oh. winter approaches, cryo, like <laughs> the word cryo, like a cryo chamber, yeah, you know, like the cold, yeah, cryogenic, yeah, 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 yeah. cryogenic, yeah, yeah. cryogenic. Okay. So that's it. Cryophobia is the fear of winter. So if you have a fear of winter coming, I know it's warm right now, but it's going to hit. Mm. Wow. And, and that's well, I, I, from. I don't really have a cryophobia then, because I mean, we yeah. grew up in Canada. You can't have cryophobia. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, <laughs> you you can bitch and moan about it, but you can't you can't be afraid of it. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Oh, so that's sickness or suds wow. today. All right. And uh, as part two of Stillina's Saturday, it's time is? for Ask Ian. Ooh, looks like Ian so, has a new phone. Oh, yeah, I do have a new phone. It's nice and red. Wow, that's oh, good. Lovely. Mine right. is, yep. mine is, uh, oh, hey, you can see, you mine can is see purple. everyone in my. You can see everyone in the phone. Yeah, there you go. See, now we're Look advertising for Apple on here today. Uh, so, so I mean, for, what? I have a question for Ian, Rob. Well, that's yes. good. Yes. Do least. you think I should ask a question to Ian? I think you should ask him anything. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, today's question comes from Will um, Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, ah. as from uh, Joey. And uh, Joe... <laughs> Joey in Delaware <laughs> is uh, it's a big day for Joey. Joey's <laughs> Joey in Delaware is having a big day today. <laughs> like is he a boy, Joey? Yeah, good for Joey. <laughs> having a, Joey's having a party tonight. He says he's going to give a speech at it and everything. But anyway, he Hello. he Joey was interested to know, Ian. Uh -huh. uh, have you watched uh, any of the coverage this week of the days after the election? Um, are you relieved? It's, a, it's sort of a, a multi-part. Are you relieved that uh, Joseph R. Biden from Wilmington, Delaware, is is now uh, president uh, elect uh, Joseph mm -hmm. R. Biden? And if so, why? Um, so, yes, uh, not only was it one of the things that I was doing when I wasn't paying attention in class, um, mm. to be completely honest, oh. um, I had a, I have a Conf laptop confession time. Now we're going to talk about confessions with Nadia Bowles Weber, <laughs> but okay. So we're getting some confession here. I have a laptop just, just outside of my screen here with, um, that I put, the, put CNN on and, uh, was watching the coverage and to say it was stressful was, would be an understatement because of how close it was. Um, but I, I am, I'm stoked and over the moon that Biden won, um, ha he flipped Pennsylvania or mm -hmm. yeah, Pennsylvania. Um, I, I really hope that 
there is some actual change that happens like systematically like um, Biden has a plan to set in motion having America become carbon neutral by 2025 mm. I think or 2035 mm. something like that which is like that would be big that that's a huge plan and I really hope it actually comes to fruition um also like everything with the BLM movement like how um w- there was also the it, um Kamala Harris was the first woman and first person of color vice president Mm -hmm. first woman person of color vice Mm -hmm. president also like that's big that's huge so i really hope like there's some actual good decent change that comes from having biden as a president it's really really a good thing for you yeah you're seeing some hope you're seeing some hope we're probably we didn't talk a lot about that over the last couple of years did we no no (laughs) not at all yeah what do you say i mean if, if joey was asking rob what would rob say I, yeah. Well, I, I had, I think I posted on Facebook or Twitter this morning. Um, the question was, um, did I just exhale? Oh yes, <laughs> yes that was breath that came out. That of was me. And oh, that's, my my lungs I, I still. I feel like are... I've been yeah holding my breath for the last week. I mean, the first night I went to bed late Tuesday night and woke up in the middle of the night and grabbed my phone and was you know in a day days going. Anything happened? Anything happened? And it's hard not to think about it, right? Yeah, it's, it's hard true. not to feel invested yeah. of it. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, I'm I'm happy about it, obviously. Uh, but at the same time, I temper that with knowing that um, um, the uh, losing party is still pushing the rhetoric, rhetoric yeah. that he's doing, which which could cause some da- some dangerous things mm-hmm. to happen over the next little while. And I'm, so my thoughts and prayers are still with the folks there. And I know there's it's to be celebrated, but there's some caution there too. We got to yeah. get through this next couple of months. Yeah. Um, so. But overall, yeah, thrilled about about the result. Mm. Yeah. What about you, Kevin? Well, anybody who follows me on Twitter knows just how much I love Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so, uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm relieved that it's happened, just because honestly, I'm sick and tired of like trying to drink uh, a drink through a fire hose. Like every day, I'm just tired of the daily. Uh, like just it, it, it's nonstop. It's not once a day, even it's several times a day. There's some insanity out of the White House and it, it, it permeates. I mean, basically, it's become all of CNN and MSNBC for mm-hmm. the last four years. In fact, I don't know what they're going to do with their programming now come January, but <laughs> because that's all they've done. And so there, there's that. But the other thing that I, I guess I'm my the, the fact that it's done and he's won by a decent margin in terms of the popular yeah. vote. But I, I just, I, it saddens me that 70 million Americans mm-hmm. after four years of Donald Trump could vote for that. That, yeah. I, yeah. I got to say. That's a bit mind boggling. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of, there's yeah. a lot of work to be done in America. That's for sure. Yeah, but, but is. rest assured, Joey, uh, in Wilmington, Delaware, we're glad you listened to the Vickers Crossing and, uh, <laughs> If you ever move we'll to Washington, if you ever move we'll to send Washington, you a mug. <laughs> we'll send you a mug. If you ever move to Washington, Joey, pick us up there too. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah, a lot of listeners yeah. in Baltimore, as it turns out. So, right. so, right. so Joey, you just keep in touch with us. Uh, we'll send you a mug. You can send us one from your workplace. And uh, we're glad that you're tuning in. That's right. All right. Uh, Nadia is uh, about to join us here. So we want to make room for her. So we'll uh, bring her into the Vickers Crossing and we'll probably have more to say about today and some other things with Nadia Boltz Weber. Lovely. Come on in. And here she is, Nadia Boltz Weber, joining us on the Vickers Crossing in the Zoom room. Welcome, Nadia. We're so glad you could be with us today. Oh, thanks. What a day. <laughs> what a day. I said the of all days. Day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we just mentioned in our opening that uh, as we were preparing to record today, that just an hour ago or so, that uh, Joe Biden, the call was made, Joe Biden's won the presidency. So um, quite a day for us to be chatting together, but uh, thank you for being here. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, well, let me do a little bit of a formal introduction, but I'm using words that uh, are on your webpage, so I, they better be correct, okay? So yeah, no promises. <laughs> yeah, no that. promises. Yeah. Well, I like the quote that's on there of yours. It says, God, please... Help me not be an asshole is about as common prayer as I pray in my life. I like that. That's my kind of prayer. But it says, Nadia Bowles Weber is an ordained Lutheran pastor, founder of House for All Sinners and Saints in Denver, Colorado, the creator and host of The Confessional and author of three New York Times bestsellers, uh, memoirs, Pastrix, The Cranky, The Beautiful, uh, Cr- The Cranky, Beautiful Faith of a Sinner and Saint, Accidental Saints, Finding God in All the Wrong People, and her most recent book, Shameless, A Sexual Reformation. She writes and speaks about personal failings, recovery, grace, faith, and really whatever the hell else she wants to talk about. She always sits in the corner with other weirdos. I like that. 
because uh, I'm a weird I'm a weirdo myself. So yeah. thanks for coming and sitting in this corner with these weirdos. We appreciate yeah. you being here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so thanks for being here. Um, we wanted to just sort of start with what is I mean, obviously, we need to sort of just acknowledge where we are today. It's November 7th, a few days past the uh, election date. But finally, uh, it's been called that the president elect now is Joe Biden and vice president elect Kamala Harris. Um, so yeah, you've had a little bit going on over there. Uh, it's probably been a bit of a week. Uh, last Sunday, you posted in your, uh, in your blog series, your prayers, if sorrow could be tasted, the bitterness would overcome me. Open my mouth to the sweetness I need. Words of kindness, deep, unhurried kisses, and absolutely as much Ben and Jerry's as I dream necessary, deem necessary. Help me remember that you are on the other side of Tuesday, no matter what. Amen. So here we are. We're on the other side of Tuesday, Nadia. <laughs> but a few days past it. It's been a long week. We just heard the call. How are you doing? Tell our listeners how you're feeling in the midst of this. Oh my gosh. I feel like I forgot what hope feels like. And now I'm experiencing it for the first time in a long time. I mean, it, it does feel like, uh, not to overstate it, but the vanquishing of the powers and principalities of this present darkness. You know? yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a there is a spiritual aspect to um, to the problems that this country experiences, and um, so I I'm just overwhelmed. I, I I'm so I'm so grateful to uh, Black Americans, to Black women who put so much work into this, who um, have refused to to accept the disenfranchisement that the white establishment. Um, always, always seeks to instill in their communities. Mm -hmm. Incredible. So um, our country is, the best of our country is what the best of our country is because of who they are. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm just so grateful. Good. Good. Just thinking about that. Uh, um, one of the people that really stands out to me is Stacey Abrams. Oh. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you can say something about her, but I mean, I just, I think like I saw something, I think it was uh, AOC this morning tweeted this thing about the Lincoln Project saying she, she hopes they can redirect some of the million, many millions of dollars they've, they've raised to help, uh, you know, people of color and people on the margins who, who have done the groundwork for this right. uh, victory in places like Georgia. But Stacey right. Abrams, my gosh, uh, can you say something about her? Yeah, the funny thing is just a half hour ago, I was on a, a Zoom call um, with uh, several of my friends, one of which name is uh, Reverend Dr. Nichelle Guidry. Mm. And um, it's this group of women, we have matching tattoos. We've just been in each other's corners for years and really close. But she's the Dean of the Chapel at Spelman College and Stacey Abrams is, and, and that is in Georgia, that's in mm -hmm. Atlanta. It's the sister college to Morehouse. And she, um, and Stacey Abrams is an alum of Spelman. It's a black women's college. Mm. And so um, Michelle said um, that she feels like Stacey Abrams is an extraordinary example of what you can do with, with defeat. Mm. Because um, she, the gubernatorial race in Georgia was basically stolen from her through voter suppression. Yeah, and, the, and she could have quit. She could have been like, I can't do this anymore. And instead she doubled down and she kept going and she registered 800,000 voters in the state of Georgia. Wow. And um, I mean, it, it's, it, it's extraordinary what, what, um, what she's accomplished and it, it should make us all reflect like what on, what do we do with, with failure? You know, what do we do mm -hmm. with defeat, not failure? Right. Um, and how do we respond to it? She, she's incredible. Good. She's a hero. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And it's that ground, it's that grassroots groundwork, right? Like it's not, we, we often get focused on the large macro sort of things, but, mm -hmm. but what's, what, what, what turned Georgia is that sort of hands-on work, you know, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And, and again, today is a day to celebrate. And I know a lot of people are breathing <laughs> again, as you say, um, but also to get here, uh, you know, we've walked through that desert for a while now to get to this point today to, to do this. I want to ask you a little bit about that. One of the stories, I think, in this election that we've been following, certainly, is um, the strong support that Trump had from white evangelicals. 
and we we watched that um but something different or at least more vocal was was present during the election and i know you were one of 1600 clergy members and other religious figures that endorsed uh biden and i wanted to read for our listeners what you wrote about that hey rob that's that's uh, hey rob that's president-elect biden to you okay president-elect biden that's right that's right (laughs) Um, So this is what Nadia wrote. In the Hebrew Bible, God's people were judged according to how they treated certain groups of people whose interests they were commanded to protect, not stockholders and property owners in the 1%, but the foreigner, widows and orphans. So as a woman of faith, I must support a ticket that protects the weak, not mocks them. I must support a ticket that protects the refugee, not incarcerates them. I must support a ticket that protects women not separates them from their babies at the border. As the woman of faith, I am supporting the Biden-Harris ticket because I want this country led by people who know that God is God and they are not. That know that God's strength is perfected, not in our boasting, but in our weakness. And as a woman of faith, I am compelled to support the Biden-Harris ticket because Jesus preached that he had come to preach good news to the poor and freedom to the prisoners and liberation to the oppressed not the stripping of the social safety nets and establishing for-profit prisons and justifying knees on the necks of black men. Hmm. Um, We've chatted on the podcast recently about this. And we chatted with people like uh, Jack Jenkins recently and Robert P. Jones. And and what's clear is that people of faith do have an influence, uh, even at the, at the grassroots. And, um, and we talk a lot about how faith intersects with the public square here on our, on our, podcast and how that has an impact. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about, you know, those competing images of the gospel that have been in America and still are even after today and, and what's going on with that and how have you kind of navigated your way through that? Well, in, uh, I, I used to, in the before time, uh, travel a lot for public speaking and often in other countries. I think I was in seven countries last year. And what happens when you're an American and you travel to other Western developed countries is eventually you get the questions. Mm. <laughs> like they're yeah. all, eventually mm-hmm. they're like, all right, we got an American. We got to ask her. <laughs> we got a live one here, folks. Yep, <laughs> yep. Can't, can't let the opportunity pass. So <laughs> the questions are, are legit. And the questions are always, look, our, our, our societies seem to have a lot in common but there are some things that we don't have in common that we find really puzzling. And can you help us understand? And there's three things generally they wanna talk about. One is the gun laws. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two, uh, and then two, number two and three are related. Two, mass incarceration of citizens. Yeah. Three, the death penalty. Mm-hmm. So these are three things that I'm asked about. I'm held to account as an mm-hmm. American traveling abroad. Yeah, yeah. And, and the fact of the matter is that there is the origin of the, these are all, these all have a, a sort of, I would say a dark spiritual aspect to them. Mm. And all of that has an origin. And the origin is in um, how the country was founded. The origin has to do with white supremacy. Yeah. So the fact that this country has never dealt with its original sins, we've never had, uh, we've never repented of them. We've never fully named them as a society. We've never, um, we didn't have a truth and reconciliation commission. Uh, you know, the um, uh, reconstruction was not allowed to actually take hold after slavery was ended. Mm-hmm. So because of that, I feel like there's been created spiritually these dynamics in our country, powers and principalities, because um, what happens if you, um, if you establish a country through stealing human beings from a continent, mm-hmm. enslaving them uh, for generations, enslaving them here, you build it through that and through the, the theft of land and the genocide of the native population, and you never, ever, ever deal with that. It's just like in a person. If you have, if you have unprocessed trauma, if you have done horrible things that you've never confessed and they just sort of corrosively eat at you or they, they're never really dealt with and so they're just lifting weights in the corner waiting to come get you, right? It, it's <laughs> yeah. the same with the country. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. so much of what, of what we see of a lot of the social ills in this country really can go back to that 
in yeah. my opinion. Because look, yeah. if you um, if you know on some level, sub, like subconsciously, that you live in a castle that you got through some dishonest fucking means, right? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. It is built. It is actually built on human bodies for mm -hmm. you to live in a castle, and yeah. you kind of know that. Well, what are you going to want to do? You're going to be very afraid of anybody who looks like the kinds of people whose bodies that you are living on top of. Right. You're going to be very afraid of them um, subconsciously. And the best thing you can do is to always have a sidearm. You're going to need to protect mm -hmm. yourself and you're going to need to protect that castle you're living yeah. in from right. anybody who vaguely looks like the kind of people whose bodies were built on it. Right. And so it might not be conscious thought. But it's right. spiritually embedded in right. these systems in our country. So right. that's why we have those gun laws. And then what mass incarceration is very related. We need to be able to lock up as many of these people who look like the people we built this shit on. Um, and if and when they are locked up, we need to reserve the right to kill them. Right. So God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> wow. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just think that, uh, you know, thank God for voices like your own that are speaking a different narrative and at least acknowledging these, these things that are ingrained that are, uh, you know, a part of us. And that's what, I mean, I think Robert P. Jones in white too long, the way he talks about it is a willful ignorance that, you know, we, we, you know, that we've, we've sort of convinced ourselves that we're not something that we really are, um, correct, correct. you know, and, and when you get to see, it play out like uh, Rob and I were talking about. What was her name, Rob? Paula Jo? Uh, uh, not uh, uh, Paula, Paula White, White. Was it? Oh, yeah. brother. Paula yeah, White. that was. Yeah. yeah. Watching that go on with uh, and whoever was walking behind her. We still <laughs> figured that out. Some wandering but, Aramean um, behind her. I, <laughs> I hear the sound of victory. I hear the sound of victory. Yeah. What is yeah. that? And, I um I wrote well, about her. I wrote a book in t 2008 called Salvation on the Small Screen. Yes. Yeah. 24 hours of Christian television. Not what we would call an important piece of work. I want to be clear. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, but I wrote two chapters about her. I, I, and in that book, I said, I, I think she might be the devil. <laughs> well, this is 12 years ago, you yeah. know? Yeah. And Where's I also up? said she had so much toxin injected into her face that it could possibly taint the water supply of a small farm town. Like, much. Wow, that's a lot of Botox. Yeah. That's, that's a, a lot, lot of Botox. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It takes a yeah. lot. Yeah. But the other thing I wanted to mention, you know, in, in terms of America and how our sins are related to how we relate to religion is that what you'll see is that there's a very similar approach to both scripture and the constitution mm. that the same group of people likes to take if you pay mm -hmm. attention white nationalists so what, yeah. what what's that white nationalist right it becomes well, national yeah so so um the the woman who was just um wrongfully appointed to the supreme court here amy coney mm -hmm. barrett mm -hmm. she is what we call a constitutional originalist mm -hmm. and so Constitutional originalism is basically camouflage for self-preservation of um, wealthy white people. Mm -hmm. And what they do, instead of saying, we're going to interpret the law according to what will protect us and our wealth and our whiteness, they say, oh, no, our interpretation of the law has nothing to do with us. Uh, it has to do with what the founders mm -hmm. intended when they wrote the Constitution. It <laughs> just so happens that that interpretation benefits the category of people we happen to be in exactly. that's totally a coincidence like yeah. show me a black female jurist who's a constitutional originalist yeah, they right. don't exist okay <laughs> right. so exactly. um same with scripture when people have an approach to scripture where they're like look um this this uh, this interpretation of scripture it's not us it's god yeah, so and it, yep. it happens to benefit the category of people we are in. It happens to allow us to maintain dominance over another group of people. Completely a coincidence yeah. because Whoa. you need to understand it's not us. It's God's right. will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah, it says exactly so right, right there. It's not me, right? Yeah. There in the yeah. red letters, the red letters uh, say it all. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. similar, similar approaches and similar ways of camouflaging things, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, Nadia, I have a mother, as you may or may not know, and your books are found. 
<laughs> Sorry. Like most of us, like he was born. Us, he was born at some point, way back um, in 19, 2000 and something. Can I continue? You grown in a pot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Go ahead, Ian. But your books are found all around my house. And I know that my mom would love to ask you a question. So I'm I'm going to ring her up. Is that is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Can okay. I just tell you how common it is that young people are like, my mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it's either yeah. it's either that or my grandmother thinks Oh no. <laughs> oh god, don't go there. Donna, anyway, where are you? Give Donna. me one second. Uh, let's let's Donna. grab Donna. Mother. Well, isn't that funny? Mother, he's yelling at the window. <laughs> mom! Mother, get up here. Yeah. <laughs> She'd be here in one second. Um, isn't it something, though, that uh, we, we've reached that age where people say to us, you know, my mom. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah know. Ian, Ian, maybe you should pick up one of Nadia's books. Like, maybe I, I will. Like, like this. We actually, this while we're waiting for Donna, we had a question, Nadia. Why is, Kevin's, why is Kevin's cover different than my cover? No what comment. Happened? No comment. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know why they're different. Okay. We're trying it's, to uh, because my publisher, I, I was tired of fighting with my publisher and they were like, we should have a new cover and title for oh. the paperback. And I was tired of fighting with them after a few years yeah. of it yeah. and with two books. And so I said, whatever you want. And so yeah. what they thought would be better is to have an ugly co cover with a ridiculous title. So, you know, there good you for go. them. Which one? <laughs> okay. Hey, Nadia, there's Donna. Hello. Hi. Oh my gosh, I, I can't believe I'm actually invited in here. This is like sacred space of Ian. So this is <laughs> nobody's amazing. ever been in there. Nobody's ever been in that room. <laughs> well, yeah. not for the podcast. Does it smell? In, so. Does it smell? No. What does it smell like, Donna? <laughs> no, it's pretty good. He's pretty good, I must say. He okay, uh, he's moved his laundry baskets onto his bed. Okay. So, tell him that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that, so that works well. It's it's great to see you, Nadia. I was watching um your live uh, prayers on oh. Tuesday and yeah, saw you making your biscuits and everyone that came on and your mom. And I just thought that oh, was... wasn't my mom. Great. Oh, your oh, mom was awesome. Yeah. She was the star of the day. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I just yeah. loved it. I just, uh, I was Aww. so excited. I'm excited to see you. You're like my rock yeah. star to me. So I'm quite Aww. excited that I, uh, yeah. have a chance to come and see you and, um, and Kevin and Rob too. You're great. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I just... Hi Donna. Hi Donna. <laughs> we love you too, Donna. But I'm just so thrilled to be able to, to be here and actually see you because I've uh, I've read a lot of your books and I've uh, I've repeated quite a few of your prayers as well and shared them. So um, I, I appreciate your your vulnerability and your honesty and, and how you go about doing things. I, I think Aww, you're just uh, you. yeah, you make such a difference. And congratulations. You probably already talked about uh, Biden, but I just uh, <laughs> I want to say it and share and celebrate with you because I know it was quite uh, quite a lot of anxiety for all the U.S. and for oh. you on Tuesday. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know how we could have survived another four years of Trump. Mm -hmm. I just don't know mm -hmm. how we could have done and you know, it. And you know, Nadia, uh, uh, Donna has a brother in what, North Dakota? North Dakota. Yeah. Yeah, he's... Mm -hmm. uh, He's my nephew's uh, has COVID and my brother's waiting. He and his wife are waiting to find out if they actually have COVID. And he thinks I was might. just about to say, do they have COVID? Because yeah. the Dakotas have mm. gotten just yeah. hit hard. Yeah, hey, but they got but they got Sturgis in. So, hey, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, awful. just awful. So. So I get to ask a question, do I? Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, I know Nadia, you you have a, a lot to a lot of work to do now. With there's there's so many. I mean, there always is people suffering and having a difficult time. And mm -hmm. I guess my question to you is, um, what do you say to people when they say, "How do you know there's a God? How do you know that deep in your heart that there actually is a God?" Because here, mm -hmm. you know, here there's so many people suffering and having a really difficult time. And I mean, I, and I certainly recognize there's lots of compassion and love in the world, but you, there's so many people suffering and really, mm -hmm. really struggling. So, and I'm sure you've been asked this, no doubt. You've worked with so many uh, vulnerable populations mm -hmm. and people struggling and questioning. So, mm -hmm. I'm curious, what do you tell them? What do you mm -hmm. say to them? Well, that one, um, I, I guess I, I understand that a lot of people struggle when, um, when there is suffering, when there's injustice, when there's cruelty, and then they go, you know, how could, how could God be real if things are hard? But, um, I, you know, one way of, another way of, of looking at it is as a Christian is to say, yeah, you know, there are a lot of people in the Old Testament too saying the same thing, you know, lamenting the same thing. 
like where the hell are you mm. uh, you know why aren't you showing up and one way of looking at the christian story is is god saying um i'm gonna come and actually transform suffering by entering into it in in an unmistakable way on the cross so i i never think of like if if bad things are happening that's a sign of god's absence I, it's actually a, a a promise of god's presence i mean it, it, it that's just my understanding of of the cross but um i i've never been an atheist i i've I envy them sometimes, it feels easier, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but does, I've yeah. never been able to pull it off. <laughs> yeah. um, but, and also I think because I have the, my understanding of God is not like God is there to hook me up with good parking places and to bless my life all the time <laughs> and to be, do you know what I mean? I and understand. To, like, I, I hear the you. sound of victory. I yeah. hear yeah, the sound yeah. of victory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, exactly. To, to make sure I'm always winning. And like, mm. I don't see that as the sign of like, oh, that means God is real. But I have felt the presence of God in hospital rooms when people are dying, mm. you know, more, mm -hmm. more than I've really even felt the presence of God in moments of celebration do you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i i don't yes. know it's so, it's so experiential for me and also i'm not a christian apologist I, I have no i have like zero interest in christian apologetics and so i never have feel compelled to convince anybody of what i believe or that what i believe is right or true like it's mm -hmm. just a project i'm uninterested mm -hmm. in so you, uh, what it sounds like, you, you open people up to discussion and, and allow them their yeah. opportunity to ask those questions, to delve yeah. into their faith, to have um, sure. honest conversation. And I mean, I think that that's huge when it comes to finding our own faith and what we believe. And I appreciate that. And I agree with you. I don't believe God's going to give me the winning lottery tickets. That hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe in any of that. And I think it's interesting that you say in a hospital room when someone's passing, because I've had an experience like that, that it, yeah it's really quite incredible and quite, yeah. and it's hard to even describe it yeah. in words actually. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's, um, I, I never try to explain things in a super logical, rational way <laughs> that are matters of faith because it's yeah. a whole, it's a separate order of reality. Mm -hmm. And so I, it feels like a trap if you feel like you have to explain them in these really rational ways. They, they can be really experiential and mysterious. And, um, and so I'm interested in people's experience around what is it, what does it mean to believe in God? I'm, I'm interested in their beliefs and stuff, but I have zero interest in like convincing them to believe what I believe. No, mm -hmm. no I appreciate yeah. that. I think that that's that people are out to convert others. And I think that's very difficult and very dangerous. And I think that yeah. it uh, doesn't yeah. allow for that self-expression. So I, I appreciate that. And that's, something I, I recognize in terms of people who follow you, it's that vulnerability of, of expression yeah. and realness. And that makes, to me, that makes such a difference. So that's why yeah. I'm a fan. That's what I appreciate. Oh, yeah. I appreciate uh, the realness. You. So thank you. Yeah. Thank oh, you for thanks. the opportunity. Hey, yeah, Donna. Donna. Have a we're going to replace, Donna. we're going to replace Ian with Donna. I think this <laughs> okay. is a, a <laughs> well, Ian, just, you're fired. <laughs> I just appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, uh, Nadia. Keep doing great work. I know you've got lots to do moving forward. I'm just so thrilled that uh, you're in a better spot than you were Tuesday. So oh. all, all, all the best, much love to you. Oh. Yeah. Same. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, Thanks, look, ma That's many, great. many thanks to uh, Ian for surrendering his opportunity to question you to his mom. <laughs> and uh, he, he's a good, he's a good boy. Listen, to, just to talk about some of the things you've got going on, Nadia, you've got a couple of great projects cooking right now. You've got your corners, the corners, grace for fuck ups. I really like that. I'm a subscriber, a full subscriber. I get the, the yeah. I just love the prayers. Um, and you've got your own podcast, the confessional, which you launched uh, last spring, I think now. Yeah, and um, and uh, both are incredible uh, in their own ways, but they're both mm -hmm. beautiful, vulnerable spaces. I think. I mm -hmm. think you you share your own vulnerability, and on the podcast, you you obviously uh, in those conversations evoke a lot of uh, vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, you make space for for shame uh, for people to be able yeah. to say what they need to say. Lots of yeah. great conversations of uh, and possibilities for transformation. 
You describe the confessional as a place where other people's stories can be a roadmap to freedom from our own shame. Can you tell our listeners more about that so that they can find your podcast yeah. as well? And maybe a story or, or, or something that comes out of those confessions that you've heard that sort of talk about the transformative trans, uh, opportunities for transformation that we can have yeah. in front of us. Yeah, I guess I appreciate that question. I mean, I, um, I've been part of, I'm part of two communities that practice confession in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lutheran Church and Alcoholics Anonymous. And so I, I had the experience of hearing people's confessions, private and corporate, and hearing people's fifth step, and also being heard, you know, wow. having confessing my own stuff. And I saw how trans how freeing it is and transformative. And, and then what I've also witnessed in life is um, how our worst moments can define who we become as a result of those, you know, and should be honored instead of ignored or you feel embarrassed or ashamed of them. You know, like so often it's our biggest fuck ups that lead to our greatest realizations of who we don't want to be anymore, you know, mm -hmm. and should be honored as such. So, um, so I wanted an opportunity for people to hear those stories. So my, my goal with the confessional for every episode is that either people feel less alone and less ashamed of their own story because they're hearing it, somebody else tell it, you know, like yeah, they can yeah. relate to what the person is saying or they have more compassion for somebody mm. um, than they normally would have had if if all they knew about that person is the horrible thing they did told in 160 characters on Twitter, right. mm. there's no space for compassion, then that's all they are and can be judged accordingly. But to say, to let somebody's story breathe a mm. little bit, to have an understanding of like, what led to them doing this thing? And then what did they learn as a result? Um, it allows us to have more compassion for even somebody like Chris Schumacher, who was mm -hmm. in this, the first season, who, who um, killed, stabbed his friend to death in a drug deal, you know, mm -hmm. and to hear his remorse from that, to hear a story of it, he spent, you know, he served his time in prison and to hear who he is now and the sadness he still carries about having done that, that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm, I'm just more and more interested in compassion, not, just to be clear, like not because I have an excess of it and I want to share because I have so much, <laughs> but it, but because I can have a real deficit of it, but, right. but I find it to be, that's the magic sauce, like real compassion for other people, because that's what allows us to become transformed and to not just stay in our shame. I think, because right. like, if you think of um, Les Miserables, mm -hmm. like, what what transformed Jean Valjean into a better man? Was it the accusations of Javert or was it the priest mm. handing him the candlesticks and yeah. saying, Insane. I meant for you to have these two? That mm. fucking yeah. broke the guy. Yeah. Love yeah. The yeah. compassion. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. the accusation, you know? Right. So yeah. I I'm I'm just really interested in that and want to tell those those stories you know there's a there are enough opportunities to hear about people's accomplishments and their virtues and you know their teaching and all that i i wanted a really i wanted to carve out a really really particular corner of the internet you know yeah mm -hmm. yeah i know some of those stories um propped up in the books you've written too, of the people that you've engaged with in your ministry and such. And um, well, before we wrap this up today, I wanted to make sure people um, had an opportunity to, to take a look at some of these, if you haven't already, like Accidental Saints, which is one of Nadia's books. And I just, I wanted to say that I read this about six, 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 seven years into my uh, ministry. I was ordained mm -hmm. as a second career and struggling in that sixth or seventh year and wondering if yeah. I had made a horrible mistake because I just wasn't getting it. <laughs> and and yeah. I, I knew I wasn't, you know, and, and what this did for me, Nadia, was yeah. remind me to look in a different space, which is oftentimes not where I was looking, which is mm. in people's stories and sometimes in their brokenness. Mm. And and they, they don't teach you that in seminary, no. right? They teach you all the, all the glitz and glamour and things that you're supposed to be doing in the process and all that. And it really helped. So I'm, I just wanted to say yeah. thank you. And I appreciate it. 
I appreciate that. But the other well, book is, uh, sorry, go ahead. You know, I, I just want to say, you know, I wish more pastors talked honestly about that feeling of mm -hmm. like, I'm not getting it. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, there was a time, there were several times in the first three or four years of house when I was a church planter that I just, I, I nearly, I nearly quit. Like yeah. I just thought yeah. I, I'm a, I felt like such a failure to be honest. Yeah. And I, um, it wasn't working. It just wasn't working. Yeah. And I, I was trying everything yeah, no, no. and it wasn't working. Yeah. And, um, and I was exhausted. And so I, I guess, you know, what's weird. I, this is a weird thing to talk about, but one of the, you never know what's going to help you, you know, when you're in that point of almost yeah. giving up, like, you don't know what's going to help you be more Stacey Abrams. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. so uh, to bring it back around, but I, I watched this documentary about, oh God, I just forgot his name. He's a, like a comic who's British and he actually identifies as a transvestite. He wears women's clothes. Eddie Izzard? He's, Eddie Izzard, okay. He's up, they're amazing. They're so funny. <laughs> okay, so I watched a documentary about Eddie Izzard when I was at this low point of going, I think I'm done. Mm -hmm. I think I, I think this was a mistake and I don't have what it takes and I should just call it, right? And I watched this documentary and he, uh, they were talking about his, the first like, geez, 10, 12 years he was doing comedy. He was horrible. I mean, he, it took him so long to find his voice and his niche and to, and now he's like extraordinarily good at what he does. But there was something about, you know, there's that parable about the fig tree where they're like, it's not producing, just cut yeah, it down. Cut it down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, the, then that the landowner's like, well, give it one more year, you know? Yeah. And so the whole, like another one more year for the figs, you know, one more year for figs, give it another year. I, um, for me, watching that, that documentary about Eddie Izzard and knowing how good he was at what he did mm -hmm. and how bad he was at it for the first 10 or 12 years, yeah. like, yep. it really helped me. Like, I, I don't know why that was the thing that day that helped me not quit, but it totally was. So yeah, totally, if my book totally. helped you, like, oh. not throwing the towel, yep, yep. just know I'm paying it forward from, like, the person who made that Eddie Izzard documentary. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's great. That's good to hear that. And you're right. I wish – I Kevin and I have this conversation all the time. Mm -hmm. I wish when we got together as clergy, which we do often for things, that we would talk about how sometimes this really sucks. Yeah, you know, and how hard it is and what we're struggling with. And, yeah. and, and, and I, but there are times when we say, well, I don't want to stand up in front of all these people and say a week ago, I was laying in bed in the middle of the night, writing yeah. my resignation letter to the Bishop. Right. I don't want to put myself out there. But can you imagine how transformative oh, I've always yeah. wanted to have yeah. a clergy conference where there's a panel that all they do is talk about the worst mistake they made. I love like, it. Mm. like what, like, some yeah. sort of nepotism in hiring or mm -hmm. you know i know what i would talk about i would talk about boundaries that uh like the process by which i learned how to have better boundaries mm -hmm. and in terms of you know anyway it doesn't matter but i i have so many i could draw upon that are like oh, right I did this thing here's why i yeah. did it here's what yeah. whatever like i feel like that would be so much more instructive heartening yeah. even yeah. Mm -hmm. You and know, how, trans man. how transformative to those that we serve, right? To know that their <laughs> that their pastor breaks and snaps and and has totally. the same is in that same dark spaces often, which piggybacks on exactly what Donna was talking about, which is where God shows up, yeah. right? And that's that, that's, that, that that's, that's, it, that's, ex you know? that's exactly right. Are do you guys? I don't know. Do you use the same lectionary? Are you preaching yes. on the ten, yeah. ten virgins? This yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so I just recorded a sermon yeah. for a church in Seattle for that, and yeah. I'm like. Yeah. Look, I don't think that the foolish, the foolish bridesmaids were foolish for not bringing enough oil. Mm. I think they were foolish for listening to those other chicks tell them what they should do and then doing <laughs> right. it. That yeah. was yeah. the foolishness. That was the because foolishness. Yeah. If if at midnight someone said the groom is coming, mm -hmm. he had a lamp. Right. How are you going to see he's coming if he didn't have one? Right. That, right. Like the yeah. foolishness is in thinking. I have to bring everything 
myself. I have to be totally prepared. I have to have everything it, it takes. I have to have enough oil. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of saying, instead of trusting that there's enough around you and the Lord's light is enough, you know, right. and no wonder he, the groom didn't recognize them. Like, I don't know you because I think God knows us when we come to God in our lack. Yes. in our failure, in our yeah. need. And yet we're convinced that we can only come to God in our successes and our victories and our yeah. strengths. What yeah. the fuck is God going to do with that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I hear the sound of victory. I hear the sound of victory. <laughs> exactly. It's like, yeah. No, that's, that's so man. true. It's just, and I, I'm with Rob. I mean, I don't know how often we've talked about this, but we, we get together as clergy and it, it's, it's almost seeing who can pee up the clapboard higher. You know, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just craziness. It's, you know, yeah. well, you know, uh, and how was Christmas? Well, my church mm. was full. No shit, Batman. It was Christmas. Exactly. How, how are you doing? How is what's going yes. on? You know, yeah, exactly. talk about yeah. confessional. Exactly. Like you said, if we could get to those places where we say, this is what, this is where I was broken this week. This is where I snapped. This is right. where I, I didn't know if I could get out of bed tomorrow. You know, that right. exactly. Yeah. It's not um, as powerful anymore if you no, do that. It's not yeah, dominating yeah. you anymore if That's you do right. that. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, it frees you. Um, so Advent's coming up in a few weeks, and I know um, Nadia's going to be taking Nadia's part. Gonna be Kevin, here. did you want to give a talk a little bit about Yeah, that? just to let people know here, well, certainly because we're on the World Wide Web, you can join us from any, anywhere, but uh, the Deanery of uh, London here in London, Ontario is hosting an event for Advent. Um, and Nadia is our speaker. So it's a two night event. It's happening on uh, November the 25th and December the 2nd. Is that right? I, I, I think. Anyways, it's the, it's the last Wednesday in November. We got a poster. Yeah. You may have a poster. It's the last Wednesday in, in November and the first Wednesday in December. And just like today, where we had this great conversation, there will be, it will be conversational. Uh, Nadia will have uh, um, uh, time to talk, but also uh, we'll do some breakout rooms and you'll have a good. 30, 40 minutes to have Q&A with Nadia and, uh, and talk about Advent and about light and darkness and about new, new beginnings and everything else. So we're excited that you're doing that. Uh, Nadia, you're excited to be joining us, I'm sure. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Good. <laughs> and, good and, I sh and I should add, the Deanery is also hosting an event with Indwell a week later. Uh, the last, that second Wednesday is December the 9th, I think. And uh, it is an event where the deanery is encouraging local churches to get involved. Indwell is a, uh, a multi-denominational uh, charity, which is build, building housing for those who are vulnerable, who are on the street. Uh, they're doing incredible work. Uh, we've raised some money. Those of you who'd like to give to it, uh, you're welcome to contribute. We're at over $16,000 right now. Uh, and we want to do what we can to address homelessness here in the city of London. So join us for either of those two events through our advent time here in this area and if you're listening from anywhere else across canada or the united states and you want to join us just send us an email we'll make sure you get the link and you can be with us too all right good well Nadia, on this day of uh of uh, new beginnings and light um at least it feels like that anyway we hope it continues we are so thankful that you could come and share some time with us and we're really looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks again here in our, in our yeah, community so you're thank welcome. you I'm. Uh, I look forward to the day I can return to Canada in person. <laughs> yeah, we had a, yeah, yeah. we had you at clergy conference down in Niagara Falls. Yes. What is that? Three years ago, yeah, maybe. Years yes. Ago. And, uh, yeah. So I still think it was one of the highlights of clergy conference for me because there was one opportunity where you answered a question and our bishop sprung to feet right after you did, and I thought that's golden. Oh, <laughs> that really? Yeah. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, it was about baptism because, baptism. Uh, because open they, baptism, open ba you know. uh, because uh, open table, uh, open actually. table. Sorry, and yeah. so because it was, it was someone asked a question quite rightly. Asked the question, "How do you have so many adult uh, baptisms?" And you said, "Well, because oh, at, they, at, the, at my church, yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah. you were you were yeah. at house then, yeah. yeah." And so they said, "Well, how do you, how is it you have so many?" And you and you quite rightly said, "Well, because we include people entirely from the minute they arrive, and then once they've they've been welcomed to the table and they're involved in everything, and they and they and they feel a part of the community, they want to make that full commitment." And when you were finished, the bishop sprung to her feet to say, "I hasten to remind you all that <laughs> we we do not have open communion." 
and uh, <laughs> open. <laughs> so, so, and hey, I Kevin and I were high fiving in the back, yeah. and we were high fiving. And we said, "Oh, look at her! She got the vision to her feet." We we like that. I remember we, that because I, I guess it had been a, a conversation like that was really hot at that minute, and I had no yeah. idea, and there was yeah. this huge reaction. Yeah, because like, okay. there yeah. are a few of us who've been giving people communion whenever they come looking for it. I won't oh say I won't say who, but we'll they could be who. near. But they could be Jesus, nearby. <laughs> Jesus would be so mad at you. I know. For that. I know. I know. I know. Um, we have to protect yeah. Jesus from people, right? <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> ridiculous. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, Thank Nadia, you for being so with much. us. Thanks Nadia. for coming. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. No problem. Bye. And we're so thankful for Nadia being here. And uh, it was a great show, guys. What a day! Uh, what what a day. Treat. Oh, it was what amazing. A treat. It's been a day, Donna, hasn't it? You know what a revelation today was? Donna's okay. interviewing chops. Yeah, <laughs> Donna's better than us. I think she needs to do her own podcast. I think she's better I than think me. So. And yeah, <laughs> she's, Donna's got it going on. She's I, good. I, I, Ian's mom has got it going on. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> so um, again, we're looking forward to having her back. And uh, if you're wanting some more information on uh, Nadia's speaking here on at the deanery during our event in Advent, I think we have a poster on our website, don't we? Or, or we do, yeah. And there. you can yeah. send, shoot us an email. Shoot us we'll, an we'll email. We'll set you all up and you can get registered for that. Okay. So before we wrap up today on the Vickers Crossing, and thanks again to our sponsors, to A. Miller George Funeral Home, where each life is celebrated and their sister company, Cremation London in Middlesex, both family owned and operated. And also to Hyde Park Care Pharmacy and Carol and the gang out there, Hyde Park Care Pharmacy is locally owned and locally operated. And to Molly Maid, uh, Tricia Lister and her staff making your home a healthy haven. Call Molly Maid London today. So uh, there we go, boys. That's another one. And we're looking forward to uh, more podcasts before we get into Advent and Christmas. So great yeah. guests coming up. We hope everybody will tune in soon. Brian's on next week, folks. If you were a part of Canadians Praying for Americans, you would have heard him speaking. So he's going to be interviewed by us next week. I'm Rob Henderson from Holy Trinity St. Stephen's. Kevin George. I'm on Team Jesus. <laughs> My name is Ian. And next week, we'll have a guy walking behind us with a book, and we won't tell you who it is. I hear the sound of victory. I hear the sound of victory. <laughs> hey, Kevin, don't forget to both look both ways. Before you cross the street. I hear the sound of victory. I hear the sound. Thank you for listening. Our hosts are Kevin George and Rob Henderson, our producer and composer is myself, Ian, with original artwork done by Elizabeth Dodman. If you have any questions or want to know where to find us, tweet us at Vickers Crossing or find us on Facebook at The Vickers Crossing. If you have any other questions about anything heard on this podcast, leave us a comment or look in the description to find out more. Thanks! Thanks!